All right, so here's our next example on finding extreme values. Um, so we've gone with a fairly simple function here, and we're going to look at it over a couple of regions. I mean, there the second region is, is a portion of the first region, um, so we'll see what, uh, what effect that has in solving the problem. Right? Um, the other thing that's interesting here is now the boundary of our region is no longer a straight line, it's a curve, right? And in fact, it's, it's a circle, right? So the boundary is a circle. Um, the easiest way to deal with boundaries that are given by curves, in most cases, is to see if you can parameterize those curves. Um, so we'll see that in a second. Uh, first, we've got to look for critical values, right? So critical values are potentially extreme values, right? I mean, they, they tell us where our local extreme values might be, at the very least. So let's compute our gradient. So our gradient looks like y squared and then 2xy, and we want that to be equal to 0, 0. So certainly we need y equal to 0, looking at the first component. And actually, this is interesting because you've got y to be 0. What does x have to be? Ah, x can be anything it wants. So oh, interesting. Okay, so that's um, it's a little bit tricky, right? Uh, we can't actually just go in and, and check critical points. So what we actually have to do here um, is, is we have to look at y equals 0. Um, in, the, in the second case, y equals 0 is going to be part of our region. In the first example, um, where is y equals 0? Well, y equals 0 is this whole portion of the x-axis, right? But um, it seems like maybe there's a lot of work to deal with that, but it's not so bad because what do we know if y is equal to 0? If y is equal to 0, well, our function is identically 0, right? No matter the value of x. So maybe that's not, not as bad as it, as it looks at first, okay? So yes, there are infinitely many critical points, but you have the same critical value at all of them. So yeah, that's not so bad. Um, so that takes care of, of places where the gradient is 0. Now we have to look at the boundary. So what's going on when we move to the boundary? So our boundary is the circle. x squared plus y squared equals 4. <coughs> One of the ways that you can deal with this boundary is we can parameterize this by setting x equal to 2 cos t and y is equal to 2 sine t, where t runs from 0 to 2 pi, right? That's how you parameterize the circle. We learned that in, uh, in Calc 3. So what we can do now is we can say, what, is, um, what does f look like along the boundary? Well, along the boundary, x is equal to 2 cos t, y is equal to 2 sine t. So for every boundary point, we get this. We get f at... 2 cos t, 2 sine t, which is going to be, well, 2 cos t times 2 sine t times 2 sine t. 8 cos t sine squared t. Okay? So this is now this is some function of t, and we have an interval, right? 0 to 2 pi. So once again, you're back in calc 1. You've got a continuous function. You've got a closed interval. We know how to look for maximum values for continuous functions on closed intervals. What do we do? Well, the first thing we do is we check the endpoints. And um, what do we have? So g of 0, and of course, because it's a circle, whether you're at 0 or 2 pi, 
you're at the point x equals 2, y equals 0. And we know what happens there. We get 0, right? If y is 0, f of x, y is 0. What does g prime of t look like? g prime of t. Um, you know what? Let's just do it as is. We could mess around with trig identities to try and maybe have an easier derivative. Like sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. Um, actually, that might make it easier for us to find. Ah, no, let's just do it. Let's see what happens. OK. We might need some trig identities eventually, but let's do it. OK, so derivative of cos is negative sine. So we get minus 8 sine cubed t. Derivative of sine squared, we get 2 sine t times cos t, right? So we get um, 16 sine t cos squared t. So now we factor. So we have minus 8 sine t. If we take that out, we're left with sine squared t plus, oh, and here it gets a little bit trickier, right? Uh, we still have a 2 left, 2 cos squared t. OK. Ah, so it's not quite sine squared plus cos squared, which would make life a little bit easier, but um, it is sine squared plus cos squared plus another cos squared. So at the very least, I can write this as minus 8 sine t times 1 plus cos squared t. Aha. Uh -huh. And that's never going to be 0. We probably could have already seen it here. It's the sum of squares. right? So where is g prime going to be 0? g prime is going to be equal to 0 if sine t equals 0. Okay. Now, where, where, where is sine t going to be equal to 0? Um, sine of t equals 0 here, right, here. This is making me suspicious that something is wrong. Because you know what happens at those points. The function is 0. Right? The function is 0. Um, and this is not a constant function. It's not identically 0. So I've missed something. What have I missed? Can we spot it? Did I mess up my derivative? I must have, right? Because extreme value theorem guarantees me a max and a min. Right now, the only value I've managed to dig out of this thing is 0. So I've done something wrong. Okay, Cos times sine squared. I'm happy with this. So the derivative of cos is negative sine. Negative sine times sine squared is sine cubed. Yeah. OK. When I do this derivative, 2 comes down. 2 times 8 gives me 16 times sine times cos. Sine times cos. Ah, well, I know what I did wrong. Ha, 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 ha. That was the easy fix. I pulled it a minus sign. I forgot about it. Sign error, everyone's favorite mistake, yeah? OK. 1 minus cos squared t, all right? So the other possibility there, now does that even help me? Let's, oh, wait, never mind. This is a lie. This is a lie. That's not even going to work. Let's come back to here, OK? So either sine t is equal to 0, we know that doesn't get us anything new. So we've got to look at, um, we got to look at this one, OK? So what happens, let's do it up here where i got a little bit more room. What happens if sine squared t is equal to 2 cos squared t? All right. What do we get then? Well. If I divide both sides by cos squared, I guess, uh, right? Because cos can't be 0, because anywhere if 
sine and cos can't be zero at the same time. Um, so tan squared t is equal to 2. So tan t would be plus or minus root 2. Now, the tricky thing with that, those aren't standard kind of points on the unit circle, right? Where, where is tan t equal to root 2? Well, you could use your calculator if you want, I suppose. You could figure that out. Um, but we don't want to do that. Um, so how do you figure out your points? You know that tan t equals plus or minus root 2. You want to get back to, to points on the circle. How are we going to do that? Well, let's see. Um, we can think of this as, so it's plus or minus root 2 over, over 1, right? So let's think about, you know, that root 2 over 1. And let's think about it as, uh, draw a little triangle, draw our theta, opposite over adjacent. This side, root 2 squared is 2, so this side has length root 3. And so your, I guess we should call it t, right? My angle is t. Let's call it t. Um, so I know that cos t is plus or minus, again, because, you know, we have the plus or minus here. So cos t could be plus or minus 1 over root 3. And I want 2 cos t, right? My x-coordinate is 2 cos t. So I actually want um, plus or minus 2 over root 3. Um, 2 sine t is going to be plus or minus 2 root 2 over root 3. Okay? And you'd have to look at all four points. So there's going to be, you know, where are those points? Um, kind of here, 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 here. Now you got to start plugging those, uh, plugging those in, right? So let's see. And just to save myself some time, it's always going to be plus or minus 2 over root 3, 2 root 2, over over root three, right? In fact, let's just let's not worry about the signs just yet. Okay. So this is going to be x two over root three times y squared two root two over root three squared. So that's uh, eight over three times two. So sixteen over three root three. Yeah? Okay. Um, and um, now you, you count for signs, right, positive or negative, and you can work out, well, okay, um, at these two here where x is positive, that's where you're going to get your max, 16 over, over 3 root 3. Over here, where x is negative, you're going to get your min, minus 16 over, over 3 root 3, right? And you have sort of this local minimum along zero, right? So you get, uh, you get a max value, you get a min value, and in fact it occurs at two places, right? Uh, now what if you wanted to extend to the second region? Well, you would still have this, uh, this point up here where you have 16 over 3 root 3. You know that along this axis, the, you know, along this side the value is zero, along this side the value is zero, Right? And so if you're looking for the maximum values uh, for this region here, where you only take the quarter of a circle, well, the maximum is going to be 16 over 3 root 3, and it happens at that one point there, where tan is equal to root 2. And the minimum is 0, and that happens all the way along here and all the way along there. Okay? Um, so the minimum actually happens at an infinite number of places. All right. Um, that's it for this example.